Hello and welcome to episode 49 of the Roadie Rumble podcast. Today I'm joined by Paige Messier. Paige is a sophomore sports media student at the University of Rhode Island. You can find her on some URI men's and women's broadcasts on ESPN Plus or Your View, a um, couple of other podcasts on YouTube or even Twitter, um, as she has run some pretty big accounts. Um, Paige is also an ambassador for the Atlantic 10 Conference. Thanks so much for joining me and how are you today? Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm doing really good. We just talked before. We woke up a little late today, but yeah. really good start today. It's so nice outside, so I'm ready to get outside. Yeah, absolutely. I've been trying to like, I've been waiting for so long for this kind of weather. I mean, like being in the Northeast, like, you know, it's inconsistent. Sometimes it's warm, sometimes it's cold, but yeah, no, I've been waiting um, desperately for this kind of weather. So yeah, I saw this thing on TikTok and it was saying how like this weather and I've never, because th- you're from New England, right? I'm from New York. Yeah, so like you know, you know, like the New England weather. And it was saying like this time in spring is like euphoric to like the rest of the country. Like if you've never been here before, because like it's like terrible weather, then beautiful weather. Everyone's outside and it's so nice out. So I I've never like realized like how cool it is because I've always had it, but like the yeah. weather. Is yeah. No, I mean like I kind of knew what I was getting myself into when I came to URI. I mean obviously, I I live on the East Coast, but going just like a little bit up north you know it's not like crazy or anything like that but I don't know I was at Brickley's last night and I was just like wow it'd be so much nicer if I was eating this like outside right. while it was warm because it's like it's so <laughs> close I don't know it's so close yeah. during the day it's so warm and then at night it's just crazy. freezing so yeah yeah but anyways uh staying on like warm weather and and the summer do you have any big plans for the summer I'm not sure if we talked about it but do you have any like internships or anything lined up Yeah, so I have an internship with Channel 10. Um, I just found out about that like last week. So I'm going to be working with Taylor Rocha, um, Frank Carpano, and Joe Chaotic just to like kind of, because I've never done reporting, so I'm going to kind of dive into that avenue um, this summer. And then for fun plans, I'm going to Arizona for vacation. I'm super excited about that. But that's going to be in June. But um, my internship starts June 1st. I think it's it's until July or August. So I think I'll be going to like some training camps, Red Sox maybe, and then more just like I might do some lifestyle stuff too because I know Taylor has like dabbled on like reporting on weddings and weather so I think I'll do a little bit of everything yeah that's awesome I saw that you like developed a relationship with her and everything it's always so good like developing relationships with the local reporters like I've definitely done that through this like podcast and I've had like Maury Hirsch Gordon and Ian Steele and, and those guys on um and my actually actually my plan is to do something similar to you next fall um I'm gonna be a senior so with my class load kind of going down, definitely trying to explore more of TV uh, next fall. But this summer, I'm just working uh, in New York City with MSG. So, but same thing starting June 1st. Uh, I don't know if yours is 40 hours a week. Um, I don't know. I feel like five. Have... What, what were you saying? I was like, I don't know how long it is. I had to figure that out. But yeah, yeah. MSG, is that is that a, I don't know what that is. Is that like a online... That, that's not email, is it? MSG, it's Madison Square Garden. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, only only the greatest uh, arena in the world. <laughs> I don't know. I think I was thinking of AOL. Like the email. No, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, no, so, like, mine, mine is definitely, like, PR and HR, like, a mix of okay. that. It's not really in sports. It's more entertainment-related, but it's still kind of cool. And, I mean, the okay. Knicks and the Rangers play there, so, you know. Yeah. So are you going to be there like on game days and stuff? Well, they're not playing during the summer. So like I said, it's probably going to be more like concerts and like comedians. That would be so cool. Stuff like that. I know Billy Joel is known for going to the garden, uh, the real yeah. garden, I should say. I know you're from New England, but yeah, <laughs> we, we, got, we got the real garden there. So. Oh, that, you guys definitely have the real garden. Yeah. Well, we can hold that one on you guys. The championships, like that's a whole nother, whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. But. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next question I have for you, a question that we really always love to start with, um, is what is your why or, or what motivates you? Um, I think I just, and this, I always get asked this actually, but I think it's just like, I love being successful. Like I, I like challenging myself and doing the best that I can like do in every aspect. And I think this is a field where like, if it, it really reflects how much work you put in. 
So I think that I found this field really interesting because I was an athlete all through high school. And then when I came to college, I missed it so much. And I was like, I need sports in my life. So I came in as a communication major and I switched just to sports media and communications. And I just love how like, first of all, being like a woman in this field is very rewarding to me because I feel like there's very few that end up like really being su successful. So I like to challenge myself in that way. And then just, it's really a hard competitive field and whoever works the hardest will get the most. And I really like that about this job. Yeah, I always say like, however much you put in is what you get out. And like exactly. 100%, I, I have this like m mentality. I call it like always busy. Like mm -hmm. obviously in sports media, you don't have like a lot of homework compared to some other right. majors like engineering or, you know, finance, marketing, whatever. Or I don't even know, like some of the sci STEM or science majors, but um you you have to have this like always busy mentality, like doing stuff like a podcast or writing articles, stuff that isn't maybe required for the classroom, but will go a long way. So I definitely yeah. see what you're saying there. And I talk a lot about it because my friend's a bio major. She goes to PC. And so she has so much work to do, like all the time homework um, and like hard coursework. And while I don't have that, I always tell her like, well, once she gets out of college, it's a pretty like steady slope You because she wants yeah. to be... Um, Oh, yeah. a physical therapist so um she like once you get out of college you kind of have like that structured after college like with us it's kind of the real hard work comes when we leave college like you really grind now make connections but then to find a job after college that's the tough part so it's like yeah like our coursework might not be as hard as like a uh, finance or biology whatever that is but yeah to make connections to find a job that is really tough yeah. And you talk a lot about like networking and, and again, like doing stuff like a podcast or um, literally the other day you were at Fenway, right? For that, mm -hmm. that career event, like talk a little bit about networking and how important that is. And maybe just that experience uh, at Fenway. Yeah. Networking is just absolutely everything. And I love it because I love to talk. So um, I really started off at URI with networking. I had, um, babysat my my mom's boss's kids who and they ended up knowing Shane Donaldson so that's how I got my connection there like we networked through them um and then I worked with him for so long and I had such a great time he gave me so many cool opportunities and then through Shane I kind of networked like and branched off of that so I work with A10 now like like you were talking about now it's do networking and I do broadcasting and I know you know all about the broadcasting networking um but then off that I really started to use my social media to kind of branch off my name instead of like just URI. Like I've tried to make my name, um, not common knowledge, but I make people aware of what I'm doing. And that kind of helped me network with the reporters because Taylor, she just saw me on social media on Twitter. Um, and then one day she came up to me and was like, Oh, like your page. And I had known her too, because she's a pretty big name in around Rhode Island. Um, so that was all through social media. Like I wouldn't have known her if I hadn't posted on social media, if we hadn't followed each other. So everything's through networking and then when I went to Fenway it's actually a really funny story I almost turned around because I was I was actually really nervous because everyone was going with a group and I was going by myself so I was like Ugh, I'm already kind of nervous I hate, I hate stuff like that right when you're right. like the first person there and you're alone and everything like yeah I right. and I knew like the whole athletics like the athletes from URI they came in like a bus and like everyone yeah. was like together and I was just like Ugh. then I couldn't find parking and it took me, I'm not joking, two hours driving around Boston. I was like having a mental break. And I was like, I'm just going home. Like, I'm not doing this. But then I found parking like 20 minutes away and I ended up going. And it was just the most amazing experience. Like I talked to a Celtics representative, um, someone from the Red Sox, Nike. Um, then a woman from Nesson, her name was Chelsea. Um, I made a great connection with her. She followed me on Instagram and told me I can come shadow her. And it was just such a cool experience. And if I had turned around, it wouldn't have happened. So that's just like, you just have to full send and really take any opportunity given to you because you don't know which one is going to like spark a relationship. So you really can't turn down like any opportunities. Yeah, that last thing you said right there was like incredible. Actually, it's funny you say like not being able to find parking. One, because I hate Rhode Island drivers being from New York. I'm so <laughs> impatient. And two, it's funny, we drove to uh, the dunk for the URI PC game and I had to drive Zach um, like from campus for, for WRU. 
And I like, if you're coming to the dunk for the first time, you are IPC, like not from yeah. Rhode Island. It is a nightmare, like getting out of there. I mean, I'm, I'm used to traffic, but yeah, certainly. Um, <laughs> it was, it was tough uh, driving to Providence, but I think I can handle it now. Um, but yeah, no, like just talking about network and I want to get into a lot of like the opportunities that you've been given um, here at URI. It's like my next few questions that you touched on a little bit, but networking is so important. Like you said, like I, similar story with Ian Steele. Like I knew Brooke Taylor, I think who used to be at ABC six and then she hooked me up with Ian. I had a phone call with him. And then last year when the Ryan center was like dead, I had like two broadcasts with Nolan Riley and oh, yeah. after one of them, I just saw him editing, like, on the second floor, concourse, whatever. And I was like, ah, oh, I don't want to go up to him. Like, he's busy right yeah, now. He's editing. Not- and I, I went up to him, and I, like, don't regret it at all because I made a great connection with him. So, yeah, and I, I say hi to him at the press conferences now and stuff like that. So, literally, like, like you said, like, those small connections like that go such a long way. Right. Like, if you think for a second, I should go talk to them. Like, why not? Like, just go do it. Yeah. You, like, I was you, so you nervous. You never know. <laughs> I was so nervous to, to have that conversation with him, but well, you talk again a lot about like being from EP and, and playing um, multi-sport athlete in high school, playing a lot of sports. So I kind of want to start how we do this is I want to start from high school and go to where you are now. So we'll start with um, being from East Providence again, playing multi-sport, uh, being multi-sport athlete in high school. How did you find yourself at URI? And then you know, why did you end up pursuing sports media in the end? You talk a lot about being communications major first and then kind of breaking into sports media. Yeah, so I started at EP, like you said, and I played volleyball and softball. Um, and I was just like sports, I'm not joking, were my entire life. Like I would go to school, go to practice, go to travel practice, and then go home, eat dinner, start again. Like, so it was just sports all day, every day. I got recruited for D2 and D3 schools, but I decided like I kind of wanted to go to a bigger school. Um, so I didn't end up playing in college, but throughout high school, I didn't, I never knew, like I always stressed out and I know it's so stupid because you're so young, but I was always like, I don't know what I want to do. I'm, I have no idea. And I always wanted to start with the medical field. I wanted to be an anesthesiologist until like my senior year of high school. So I like applied to some places like for biology and then some places I applied as like just a general like classes. And I got, and I applied to 20 schools. I got into 18. Okay. And they were all like huge schools, like LSU, Ohio State, Clemson, all stuff like that. So then I um, visited all like a lot of these schools. Then I went to Penn State, fell in love with Penn State. Um, and then I was going to go there. Like I signed my deposit. I was going to go to Penn State and then COVID hit. So Penn State, I think it's around like $50,000 a year, something like that. It's like something insane. And I got like no scholarships at all. And in high school, I was pretty smart. Like I had a three, nine, like I but no merit none so I was like I can't go to Penn State and maybe get sent home because of COVID and spend like fifty thousand dollars like that's just ridiculous so my sister came to URI I've I've been to URI a few times just to like stay with her and I was not a huge fan like at all and I was like I don't want to go to URI I want to go far away I don't want to stay in Rhode Island but then I just was like we'll do it for one year we'll see what happens so then I came to URI fell in love with it just like the atmosphere I love the people here. I love being near the beach. I like, and I actually like being near home because it's like, if I need a dinner or like a hug from my mom, I can just drive home. Yeah. So that was really great. So I kind of fell in love with that. And I came in as a comm major and I took the comm classes and I was just like, oh, this is so boring because it's just like rhetoric. <laughs> it, and it, very, like it, it is. It's very it's boring. So boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, this, my lighting is really bad. The sun is like going crazy. Um, but um, I was kind of like looking at a lot of things. I was looking at event planning a lot because um, I was interested in that. But then I, for, I honestly don't remember how sports media like really sparked my interest. I think it was the newspaper. I think it was the Five Cent Cigar. Um, my sister was in it. So I went to one of the meetings and I went to the women's basketball game when there was like no one allowed to games. And I just thought it was so cool that like I was allowed in there and no one else was. Yeah. And so I wrote a story on them and it was really cool. And then since then, like, literally since that point, I just fell in love with sports media. I, I liked being, like, an exclusive member of the media and, like, being able to go places where people weren't allowed. And I know it's, like, kind of stupid, but, like, I just think that's so cool. Yeah, it and, is. It's so cool. Uh, like, it's so cool. Yeah. It's so cool. Like, like I, being I, able, like, like I just said, like, when no one was allowed and, and like, 
it was literally me and Nolan and like a couple of TV reporters last year. I did two broadcasts. I was like, wow, like the fact that I'm even doing like men's basketball right now, like despite that there's no one in the arena, this is still so cool. Like, it's so cool. So yeah. I was like, I was like, I love that. So I like wanted to keep doing that, and so I I declared my major as sports media. But then I realized like I need to get like ahead. Like I like in sports media, you can't just do the classes and like no, you're not gonna get anywhere if you do that. So that's when I connected with um, people like Shane and I just really started to network and get my foot in every single door that I could. Like I said, I'm sure we'll touch on it later, but with social media, with broadcasting, with just like game operations, like every kind of aspect, now I'm heading into reporting. So um, I think the main reason why I picked sports media is just because I was an athlete. My dad was a big athlete. My sister was an athlete. So it's just like my whole family loves sports. I love sports. So I think it's just the love for sports and the love for hard work. And then not really knowing what I wanted to do, finding something and just kind of sticking with it. Yeah. I mean, just growing up in sports, like it's kind of hard not to stick with that. I, I was a, like a tennis player in high school and like, I was, I was solid. I was pretty good. Like nothing crazy. You know, I maybe could have played somewhere lower level, but you know, I feel like for me, I'm just such a huge sports fan that it's like, it's hard not to see myself working in sports someday. And like you, like, I love to talk. I love social media I love I mean I've come to love broadcasting podcasting I didn't realize how cool that is like doing something like this so so it's just so fun like being able to talk to different people and like we all have this love for sports and this passion for sports I think that's so cool um it's not even like work like if we do this like one day like well not if we are going to do one day but (laughs) when when that day comes like people say all the time like if you're doing if you're doing something you love it's not work but it's like so true like our job would be to sit courtside at a basketball game and broadcast about it or write about it or post about it like that's yeah there's no better job than that that's insane I'm I tell people like I'll know I've made it when I'm commentating or I'm at like a, a final four or a super bowl or something and I'm working and I'm not there as a fan like that's that's when it'll hit me and I'm like right like this is insane but yeah you know well keep grinding keep grinding and getting there so um I guess sticking on that what is something you wish you had known um before coming to awry really I guess about sports media or just about college or, or anything like that that you now know um just from from being here yeah well one thing about like just college in general one thing I wish I knew was that you need to make a routine because when I came to college, I was, and like when I was younger, my parents, I, I wasn't sheltered, but I'm, I have very supportive parents. So like, I didn't really have to worry about much. I, I just kind of didn't have to come up with a routine because my routine was already there. Like I, like I said, I, it was sports, school, homework, bed. So when I came here and I had some t- free time, I was like, what do I do with myself? And then I found myself out of a routine. And when you don't have a routine, you end up not being productive at all. So one thing I wish I knew about college is that you really need to structure your day every day or else you'll find yourself halfway through the day, like I have nothing else to do. So one thing is definitely to make a routine and just to make, like get yourself busy because when you're busy, you're not worrying and it's, everything's just easier. Um, but about sports media, something that I wish I knew is that you really have to be your own advocate because people are going to support you and people are going to help you. But at the end of the day, you're, you're your own biggest fan. Like you have to be able to sell yourself to anyone. You have to be creative and find opportunities because the opportunities, especially here, they're not going to be given to you. Like you have to maybe come up with something new or maybe if you see something, you have to go get it. Like no one's going to be like, Hey, do you want to do this? Like that's not going to happen. So definitely being your biggest fan and your, Um, own self-advocate is probably the biggest thing that I've learned yeah absolutely I mean first of all I agree with both of those points like time management first of all is key because like we were just talking about we probably would not have gotten up if we didn't realize like you have to do things throughout the day and be productive and and that just goes without saying like that's not even a sports media thing or you or I or college thing like in life you, you generally have to be productive you have to you know manage your time successfully and you have to again, sell yourself like you were talking about. Um, But also like creating opportunities for yourself. That's something I talk about a lot. Like, again, no one told me like I had to start like a podcast like this. None of the teachers are ever going to be like, you have to do this, whatever. This started because 
actually because of COVID. Like my freshman year was cut short. I had a couple of opportunities. I was doing like WRU, whatever, writing a few articles, was getting like somewhat involved in anchor sports. I had a podcast, but it was very like kind of not not good at all. I mean, like <laughs> me and two other kids that I think both transferred out of here and like we just covered like relevant topics that every other podcast was doing. And then I was like, all right, I know I like podcasting, but how do I like create opportunity for myself? And then COVID hit. And over that summer and just that time, like, first of all, we didn't know if we were coming back like my sophomore year. And I was living in Brickside actually. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to do this. And I'm going to thank God for zoom. I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to interview different people. And I'm so grateful that I did because I would not have, a lot of the connections I have now or opportunities that I have now if I didn't start it so exactly just like creating opportunities for yourself and doing stuff like that it's so important because like yes things are going to come around along the way like people are going to give you opportunities to do things I've gotten opportunities I know you have as well but also you kind of like you just said have to go out and get it yourself right. so definitely and now this is like what 140 subscribers or something so I mean like you know people are definitely watching people and like that's the other thing no like you never know who's watching your work or doing so or like looking at your your work so like it's so important that you know you're on your game 100 percent of the time and that you're always you kind of always have a plan so I'm, right. I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that I saw on Twitter that you did you get an award for this I'm not sure. What 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 are you referring to? It was a it was a A10. I don't know if I'll be able to find it, but your name was on it, and it was like oh, podcast. Yes, yes, yes. That was so, so cool. What was that? So that was like, there's a A10 talk. I think it was. Yeah. Um, they like reached out to me and they were like, because I write articles through um fan sided like Busting Brackets, which is like the College Basketball Network they were like, all right, so, like, you're a roadie guy, like, can you give your men's basketball, like, awards, like, they, they sent me, like, a Google Doc, and they were like, all right, so who's your player of the year, defensive player of the year, and all that, and, like, it was a select group of, like, not roadie, uh, like, Atlantic 10 people, I think one, like, media person for every team, at least one, um, was there, and you, like, had the opportunity to just, like, vote, uh, it wasn't really an award, but I guess they called it like a media voting court sort of thing. I, I kind of felt like I was in like like a baseball writer, like voting on the Hall of Fame. It was very cool, but yeah, yeah no, I just kind of like went off some stats and and what I knew. Um, it's it was hard to not put Rhode Island people on there, but obviously, like it was strictly men's basketball. But um, if it were women's, I definitely would have put like oh, yeah. a lot of <laughs> a lot of the players and Tammy and everyone. And I actually have a question about the women's basketball team later on. But, yeah, no, it, it was pretty cool. I mean, certain stuff like that, it's just like – and that's the other thing, like what you were talking about. If you're just putting out your work and you're confident in what you're promoting and the content that you're producing, eventually people are going to be in your DMs. Like, wow, yeah. what you're doing is really cool. And, like, I'm sure you've gotten it. I've definitely gotten it. Random people that you don't know you end up connecting with because they just scroll through Twitter one day or Instagram or whatever it is. And they see what you're doing. So yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Like that was something like they just DM me and they're like, Hey, like we saw that you've written a couple of articles about the Atlantic 10 and you want to vote. And I was like, it's so cool. Sure. Okay. Like why not? You know? Yeah. So, definitely. Um, you know, just be confident in what you're promoting and producing. And that's like, that's something that I've learned honestly. Cause like mm -hmm. me, I, you probably wouldn't realize this, but I was very much an introvert like really in high school. Yeah, I did not talk to anyone. Even in classes, like I think we had one class together. I don't talk. I don't talk at all in classes. Like yeah, what was it? It was that, um, <laughs> No, no, we had we had monks guards class. Um Oh right. yeah. Yeah. I you probably that. didn't realize I was there because I don't talk. You're behind me. Yep, yep. <laughs> that Pecha Kucha whatever presentation, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I was not ready for that. Like mine was bad. I, mine was not good. Yeah, well, I mean, it was good. I liked it. But mine, like, you know, I feel like a lot of people don't know, like, when you put on the headset and you're a broadcaster, like, you're a whole different person. That, or, like, you have a microphone in front of your face. You're a whole different person. Yeah, I agree. In I class, like, it's not the same way. But, yeah. Um, I want to get into some of your accomplishments. Uh, I know you've had a couple of mentors. You talk about 
you know, Shane, also Stone, and, and maybe Thor, obviously. Uh, there's a few of them right there. You know, who has maybe helped you along this journey? Who has been like your go-to person um, that has kind of given you advice or I guess is your hype man? Yeah, so for like mentors, it all started off with Shane, Michaela, and Jody. Um, that's really where I started. Um, but then once time went on, Stone just really helped me with building confidence in what I was doing because I was super insecure about my broadcasting because I personally, like I played basketball in middle school, I was not good. And like, I didn't have a ton of knowledge. Like I don't really, I never before followed like the NBA or anything like that. I do now, but um, I didn't. So I didn't have like a ton of knowledge. So I was super insecure about what I was saying. And Stone just kind of helped me be confident in what I was doing and even like tone of voice, like when you should pause, stuff like that. So just like the basics of broadcasting that all came from Stone. And um, even like our last broadcast, like my mom will do went up to him and was like, thank you so much for everything. Like he's just a great mentor and I'm so grateful for that. And then for like a hype woman, that is Taylor because yeah. Taylor, she knows what it's like being, especially a woman in sports and she does everything I do. She'll tell me like how to do, like I literally cut my hair like Taylor, if anyone noticed. Like I did my haircut just like Taylor because I just think it's very professional looking. Um, but like even like how to cut your hair, what, how to wear makeup, what to wear, anything like that. Like, if I have any problem like in sports media, like, if I don't know how to handle a situation, I'll call Taylor like right away. And she always answers. So it's like, she's definitely my hype woman. She's my go-to girl. Like whenever I have a problem, I'll go to her and ask what she did or how she handled certain situations just in a professional way. So she's definitely another one. And then Thor, I know you mentioned him too. Yep. He's just such a great leader. And I just find it so cool how he treats like student media because a, a man in his position does not have to even speak to any of us ever. Yeah. And he makes us feel so welcome and so important. Like even, like, even how he like grabs everyone's hand like after a win or something like that. Like he doesn't have to pay attention to us and he does. And I think that's so valuable for all of us, like to be able to look up to a leader like that and have him acknowledge us is just so cool. And I think that that's also a connection that I'll have and that you'll have and that all of us will have moving forward. And he's even becoming a big name. Like I, I even think nationally, just because yeah. of the Arthur Miller, Miller hire and Tammy Reese, a 10 year contract, which is just like a ridiculous amount of time, like a crazy deal. Yeah. Um, he's just making really great moves and, becoming recognized in a really big platform and to have a connection with him is just so cool yeah I'm glad you mentioned all three of those people honestly I mean or four I should say like first of all I feel like Thor and, and Shane are probably the best one-two punch like in right probably not only just college but in sports and like I'm I am especially very grateful that I've had the opportunity to meet both of them um, I emailed Thor over this last summer. It's going to be a year soon, actually, right when we moved out last year. And I was just like, Hey, I have this podcast. Like, I was wondering if you want to come on within like five minutes, answered me back. Okay. And like a couple days later, I interviewed him okay. and it was just like, how often do you get to, I saw him like at, I think it was TLC one day and he said hello to me. Like how often does an athletic director just come up to you and it's just like, Hey, like, how you doing, Adam? Like, I think one right. time I saw him in the Rams den. He was like, Hey, how you doing? It's just like, it's so cool, like having that. And then Shane, like, I didn't even know who Shane was like two years ago or, or whatever when I was a freshman. And like this relationship that I built with him from being sports director uh, with Zach in WRU and getting credentials to some of these games, like he's just like the nicest person. Like you can go to him about anything. And sometimes he he's tough to get a hold of, but that just goes to show you how much of a hard worker he is. Like he works so hard. Like he's all over the place. And like, no, busy. I give a lot to, to that man. Um, and Thor as well. Stone. I mean, from day one, like when I was in high school, like as a senior, I did like a shadow. My dad, so my dad went to you, right? He was an alumni, um, which is part of the reason why I came here, but I did like a shadow day with someone who was like in the cigar who I think she graduated, but I don't even remember who it was. I went to like one of her classes. It was something like, I was like 16 or something. It was either a junior or senior in high school. And I think I remember walking into either the cigar office or the WRU office and Stone like got up right away, just shook my hand and, and like, I got his phone number and He's like, so cool. yeah, I just, so cool. like, from that point, like up until I got to arrive, he was texting me with me. Like I had questions, he was answering them. 
I've just looked up to him from day one. And then what you talk about with Taylor, I don't really know her, but that's just so cool that you have like a hype woman like that who you can go to literally about anything. So that's definitely, I mean, having resources around you are, is so important. And all four of those people you just mentioned are, are great people to have around you. Definitely. And there's definitely more. I just like, not like processing them right now, but there's just so many supportive people, even, even though they're students like in sports media, everyone's so supportive of each other, which is kind of hard to come by considering how competitive this business is. Like yeah. everyone's always retweeting each other's posts and, yep. and commenting on like anything. It's just super supportive. And I like, it's a great program at URI overall. Yeah. I mean, a couple of people have like texted me who are like seniors and whatever, um, in high school, um, the cam i think who's transferring he i've been in contact with him i gave him a tour actually like it's it's really cool it's very rewarding when like a kid who's not even at uri but is coming next year in a few years is like hey i'm looking to do what you're doing like if i come to campus will you give me a tour i think i did it for someone else too um i had a kid texting me literally yesterday from like new jersey and it was like hey like i got your number through someone else like I see what you're doing on Twitter. I'm thinking about coming to URI next year and being sports media uh, okay. major. Like, can you just talk about it? He was asking me like URI related questions and sports media related questions. I feel like that's so rewarding that like, not only are people at the university, like you talked about other, like us, like noticing each other's work, but also people like who aren't even at the school yet who are coming within the next few years and like Stone and like Nick Cardi they kind of set like the groundwork for everyone to enter this program. Cause I think my first year was the first year that I was offered as a major. So I think next year will be obviously people have graduated with sports media major from URI, but I think next year, my class is like the first class of people who have done four years of sports media, like a full college of, of sports media. Cause I think it was a minor. Oh, the year before. What was that? It's so up and coming, like yeah, it's every crazy. year you can like my class. I don't, there's your I know, class is huge. Like, my class I know is huge. so many people in your class. The freshman right? class is yeah, like a ridiculous bigger. amount. Like yeah, I, I I love and another thing I like and you kind of touch on this when you were talking. Another thing I really like about this major and kind of another why is that like you can really be like a mentor. Like people look up to you. Like I'm 19 years old and like people from college are like. I mean, from high school, and even people in college are messaging me, like you said, and just saying, tell me about what you do, like, can I shout you, stuff like that. I have yeah. someone from high school, he's probably watching this, um, and he'll just DM me, like, just for advice, and I, I, like, love answering, I would always answer if anyone ever DM me about it. And yeah, too. like, like so people cool. ask me questions, I'm always answering them, like, you're right, and it's so cool. Yeah, no, I, like, like you were saying, I mean, I feel like we were kind of saying the same thing, but yeah, no, like, just like kind of paying it forward, I guess, like what some of the people at the professional level are doing, like Taylor or Ian or Maury, and what they're doing for us, we're kind of doing for people at the high school level, and hopefully yeah. they do it for the next group of people and next group of people. So it's like kind of cool how, like, yes, sports media is so big, but at the same time, it's also so small because there's so yeah. many like networking opportunities and you can get to almost anyone. So it's, it's really <laughs> cool. I mean, like, yeah, no, it, it's crazy, honestly. Um, I guess we can start with uh, you interning with, like, Shane and, and being in the URI Athletics Department. So, like, getting comfortable with everybody and kind of just getting a feel for what it's like to work in this industry. You know, what have you learned directly from Shane and also just from, I guess, being with Go Roadie and, and working in URI Athletics? Yeah, so something I learned is that there's so much behind the scenes work, like, with everything like even like the first thing I ever did was a football besides like the cigar the first thing I did after that was a football scrimmage and I just went and I did stats and I wasn't a huge fan of it but it was cool like being in the press box and all that stuff and just like the stats I don't know if you've ever seen it it's so complex like so yes. Michaela and Shane do it and they have like this amazing relationship between each other where they just like read each other's minds and it's like super cool and it's just so like that's so complex and then like after the game, like we would go down and Michaela's like the media like liaison. So she would like get the athletes, bring them to the media. And there's just so many, like like every single different part of sports media, there's someone who works it. So it's like, there's first of all, so many jobs. That's one thing I've realized. Like people yeah. are like, oh, a sports media major, like what are you gonna do? Like there is limitless opportunities in sports media and you can switch from like anything. Um, so I learned that. And then 
Shane kind of taught me to kind of come up with new opportunities. Like he would, he gave me like a set thing that he wanted me to do. So he, I was just kind of his intern. I don't even know if I was an intern, but I was just, I was like worked under him and I was doing stats and I was like, I want to do something new. And there was a Brown football game and I wanted to go because I'm from Rhode Island. So I asked, I just went up to him and I was like, hey, like, can I come to this football game? Like, I, I want to work it and go with you guys. And he's like, yeah, sure. So then he allowed me to do the Twitter. And that kind of opened the door to, like, everything. I, like, that game, I think, is what kind of changed my path, like, in college. Because that's when I realized I love social media. So that kind of taught me, like, even though he didn't say it directly, like, that experience taught me, like, if you want to do something, like, just ask and do it. Like if they say no, which a lot of the times you will get no's and you will get turned down or you'll get people making comments about you. But like that, none of that matters. Like you have, like, it's kind of like acting like this industry, like you're going to get so many no's yep. and like so many people telling you like you're not good enough or all. And it sounds so, so sad, but like it, that's why you have to have that like competitive attitude. And that's why sports have helped. I think both of us so much like playing sports because if people, if someone tells me no, I want to do it 10 times more, 10 times better. So like, I think that the like, whole experience has kind of taught me and Shane taught me that like, if you want to do something, you better ask for it and then go get it. And he just also taught me to just be kind to everyone. And again, he didn't tell me directly, yeah. but just being around Shane, like he just is so kind to someone from like a janitor taking out the trash to someone like Thor or someone like Archie, like everyone in between, they're working hard and they're working hard all to make the school better so to just be kind to everyone show everyone respect is so important in this industry and it'll get you and it, it's okay it's good to be a good person and that's why you should do it but it will also get you so much farther because you never know like a janitor of a place could have an uncle or a dad who does something way up like you never know anyone's circumstance so to be kind to everyone just to show common decency is just so important in this industry because a lot of people aren't and they're yeah and, and, focused on themselves and you need to be like that person who people can come to and you know like a, a kind soul like in a really harsh environment if that makes sense yeah and like what i was gonna say to that like also just being yourself i feel like is the most and i know it sounds like cliche like oh be yourself yeah. whatever but like so many people are just like i have to do this and like i have to have like this ego or i have to talk like this when i broadcast just like do what you do. And like, right. you know, if you like, if you generally are yourself, you will do work like better, or you'll be more successful at what you're doing than the people that try too hard. And the, you talk right. about yeah. being kind and, and being nice to everyone too. Cause like, you never know who you're talking about. It's kind of like, you're kind of blind to everyone else when you're just meeting someone, you never know who knows who. And like, in this industry, you know, like, it's all about who you know. So yeah. like, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And like, and going off of um, the Brown game and, and working the Twitter, um, my next question actually is about managing and running the social media platforms. I know you did men's basketball. I know you've broadcasted writing, of course, you know, what do you love about working so closely with each of these programs and just the athletes in general? Yeah. Well, I, I like just, I, I, I'm a big sports fan. So one of the main things I love is just being able to be courtside. Like, I just think that's such a cool experience. Like every game, like I know you're up down there too. We just have the best view. So that's so cool. Yeah. Um, but another thing that I love and I'm actually starting to love is just looking at people, but like not just how good they are or how well they've played, but kind of focusing on the stories of players. And that's kind of why I want to go into reporting is because I think that you can really focus on who the person is behind the Jersey and I actually just talked to um, Faye Ten about this, about kind of coming up with new ideas with kind of really focusing on the human and not the athlete. Cause I think it's a huge thing right now with yeah. mental health, especially with ath athletics, like people always focus on this person's not good enough or like they need to do better, do better. But like these athletes have the best, like most amazing stories that no one talks about, like, especially writing for the cigar. Um, I wrote a story about LB Mack. He played football here. He's now, um, looking into the NFL draft, I think. Um, but he had the most amazing story. I know Ishmael Leggett ha yep. also has an amazing story. Like these athletes have these stories that they're not, they, they want them to be told. Like they're not shy about it. They, they'll give everyone the details. And I think it's so cool just to be able to know these athletes beyond just being athletes. Like, and I, I think that's the coolest part of our, our job. 
Yeah. And like, that's why I do this podcast too. Cause like right. every guest that I have on, it's telling the story and, and you're not just talking about like, okay, you had X amount of sacks this year, or you had like a whatever percentage uh, touchdown throwing percentage, whatever, like behind the stats, these are real people. And I figure, I think a lot of people forget that, especially at the college level, these are just kids. Like they're just our age, yeah. honestly, and they have to go to class and they have to, you know, do their job on the field and, or on the court and they have to practice, but mental health is so important. So that's great that you touched on that. And, you know, again, I, I think a lot of people or historically in the media, they forget that fans, especially don't yeah. realize that that gets away from them sometimes, but just really like harping on like who these people are behind the Jersey, like you just said, or underneath like the number the letter that they're wearing they're, these are real people and they have real stories. So that's definitely important. Um, actually Montana, who I do this podcast with sometimes he's doing uh, like a football thing right now where he's interviewing different position players every week and awesome. telling like sto their story pretty much. in like just a couple of quick minutes, but even something as small as that is so important because again, you only know these people on the field by their last name or their number. But again, these are real people. They have real stories and they should be told because right. they wouldn't be where they are now without those stories. So that's then also looking at it from a marketing standpoint, which is so bad, but like, that's what kind of <laughs> you have to do. And like, yep. just, like in order to build a fan base or like to make people love these players, I feel like it's also essential to like really humanize these people because if you're just if they're, like with uh, we'll take the basketball team for example like they had a rough season and the fans were very quick to kind of turn on them and like I ran the Twitter I saw the comments and they yep. were they were not good and yep. like I, I understand the frustration of the fans like it's very frustrating especially if you're buying these season tickets if you've always been fans if it's not going away I do get it like it's very frustrating but I feel like if people knew these these players and knew these stories, they, they would be more patient and stick around. Like, and that's how you build like these fan bases and build a following is to really make your fans fall in love with these players. Cause they all, I, I know these people behind, behind the scenes and they're all great people and they have these great stories. So I feel like they need to be told. Yeah, absolutely. And you said it best right there, honestly. Um, so people are so quick to jump, you know, especially, Coach Cox, best example. I mean, a lot of people don't realize like the kind of person that he is. He really is a great person. I thought he was a great coach. Obviously, the success wasn't there. The performance um, on the court, you know, wasn't entirely there. But people forget that he has to go home and he has a family. And, you know, this is his job. And you're working on the clock 24-7, 365. You know, this is your job. So, you know, people kept saying after the season, you know, fire him, fire him. And I hate that word, honestly. I had to write an article of him and, and I never used the word fire. Um, I said, like, you or I parted ways with him because, again, like, you never know who's reading it and you never know, you know, he could be reading it. And again, he has a family and, and other coaches that get fired and or get released by the universities yeah. and, and whatever. Um, you never know, you know, if they're looking at it and, and some coaches are very active on Twitter and social media and, and sure, athletes yeah. as well. So mental health is serious. And again, they're put to the pressure and so often. So it's so important to, you know, one be yourself, but also stay professional because you never know who's looking at, you know, your work and or, or scrolling through your Twitter feed. Um, so yeah, that's so important. Um, I want to touch on women's basketball and you were a very big part of their historic season. Obviously, you had the chance to nearly broadcast every home game um, at the Ryan Center for television. Again, your view and some ESPN Plus. Um, you worked with Stone and Zach and, and Kyle as well. Can you just talk about how you, again, I guess you've talked about like how you've developed yourself as a broadcaster, but I guess going off of that, like what have the other broadcasters that you've commentated games with helped you um, because, you know, not everybody just jumps into commentating or broadcasting overnight is the next Jim Nance or, you know, whoever, you know, so how have you kind of improved yourself as a broadcaster and, you know, what has Zach or Stone or any of those commentators shown you, you know, in terms of preparation or anything, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but if you could just go a little bit more into it. Yeah. So I, like I was talking about before, I was wicked insecure before. And don't mind my Rhode Island slang. I say wicked all the time. <laughs> but, um, I, 
I just like did, I felt like I didn't know what I was talking about and that's the worst thing like when you're on the screen for everyone to judge you like you always have to be on your A game you can't really stumble it's it's very it's a hard place to be insecure in because if you're insecure in it you're going to overthink everything you say and you're going to stumble and it's not going to sound good so like I said before stone really helped me with the confidence part of it and what I had to learn on my own is that preparation is just everything if you're prepared you're going to be more confident and you're going to be more clear so um, one thing I really started focusing on was preparation and I almost copied Stone's note taking to like a T. His are, are much better than mine, but just the format of how he does it, I I did something very close to it. Um, so that really helped me and that's what Stone kind of taught me. And he always took the reins. Like I I would talk only when I needed to with, with Stone because he he had so much knowledge and he was so confident that I kind of, we both had like this mutual like unsaid agreement that he was going to talk and I was just going to add stuff in and I think that was really helpful just to learn because I wasn't just thrown into like someone next to me who didn't also know what they were talking about like I had stone so I did my first like three with stones that was really helpful um and then Kyle and Zach um they're kind of in my boat like they hadn't they've just done radio before this I hadn't even done radio yet so um I think they kind of taught me like how to keep conversation going and they didn't talk as much. So I had, I was forced really to talk more. I'm not even in a bad way. Like they just, obviously they're not gonna talk as much as Stone. So I had to like kind of take more, um, more pieces and really add in what I had to say um, in more places. So that kind of helped me become more confident just being forced to talk. Um, but I think the biggest thing with broadcasting is I kind of learned like this is a, I don't want to say it's a hobby of mine because I do like think I could do it professionally, but with sports media, like you have to try everything. And I think I tried this and I think I could do it on the side. I don't think I want this to be my full-time career. So I think that's also another thing that I learned is just like, you really have to try everything and you have to see, like, I love doing it. I think it's fun. I think it's cool. But um, that's why I'm now going into reporting is because I want to try something new because I'm not yeah. sure if I can do that for the rest of my life. It's just like, you know, it's just a lot of talking. It's, a lot of preparation and it's like I don't know if I know enough about these sports to do it professionally like I I know more, enough about it for college but like to move on to the next level I, I'm not sure if I, I I could definitely learn it but I'm not sure if I'm passionate enough to learn it if that makes sense like about broadcasting so it's something that I, I'm thinking about I'm trying new things now but I did love the experience Zach Kyle um I worked with you I worked with who else have I worked Nathan, Nathan Robillard. I, I actually worked with Nathan, my like second broadcast of the year, which is crazy because he's only a freshman. So that's big yeah. props. To him. But um, yeah, I think I've learned one, how to be more confident, two, how to prepare, and then three, just like how I want to try other things too. Yeah. And like trying new things is absolutely what this major is built for. I mean, like for myself, I'm doing, like I just said, I'm writing articles. I'm kind of just similar to you just breaking into like tv and reporting um interviewing experience i have again through this podcast writing articles um the broadcasting through radio i mean 95 percent. i'm just kind of, this spring i've been doing a lot of espn plus for tv um or like just for baseball and, and softball but um really like most of my experience stems from doing radio and everything like that so everyone kind of starts off in a different place but these four years from what I've learned, like you kind of have to be, I guess, selfish in a way, like, and don't like, you know, don't take that, like, Oh, I gotta be selfish, but like, try, like, you know, don't tell like someone, no, like try, try a new opportunity, try everything, you know, get your feet wet, like with whatever opportunity it is. And I mean, like, I, even I don't know like where it is I want to work someday and I have to decide sooner than you, but you know, I guess it's just about taking like the first opportunity that comes your way and like making the most of it. And also just, again, continuing to network and develop those connections over time. Right. Definitely. Yeah. So going, sticking with broadcasting and then I have a couple more questions, but is there, you know, a broadcaster maybe at the professional level that you try and model yourself after for me? Um, I have to go with Mike Breen, who is the uh, Knicks play by play or legendary NBA broadcaster. Uh, he's famous for yelling like bang on a big play. Um, I just, I love his work, everything like that. Do you have a broadcaster? Um, I guess that kind of comes to mind that you try and model yourself after. I mean, 
because it's so important that you know you try and model yourself after people but also that you're your own person um right. again not everything that i say on the air is what mike breen would say but do you have someone sort of like that do you kind of look to as a broadcaster yeah i mean like big time broadcasters i would definitely this is so basic but i would just say doris brooks i think she's the the highest probably female broadcaster there is like the most successful um i really like how she's very matter of fact with her work and she she's just like a like she gets her business done and i don't, I don't know how to explain it i have like i just think she's really good at staying really professional and like in a male workplace like she's right right with them like with everything so i think that's really cool but then this is gonna sound a little silly actually no because i think he's gonna be really successful one day i really really like broadcasting look up to stone just because i never really paid attention to broadcasters before i started broadcasting i'm not gonna lie like i didn't really know like what they said like how to say it like i just would watch the games and subconsciously listen to them um but stone i think that I, i'm so impressed by everything he does and i just think he's he's literally going to be so successful and i, I know that so I've really looked up to him a lot. Just like I've listened to his broadcast, like and how he talks, and I've kind of modeled how I talk based on that. Um, but again, being myself and no saying true to who I am, but kind of using him as framework of like how I'm gonna talk. So I think I probably look up to him probably the, even more than Doris Burke, probably the most out yeah. of anyone. Doris Burke is from Rhode Island, right? She went to PC. She, she went to Providence College. Okay. She yeah. There. there you go. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. No, I, I mean, that's, that's a great example right there. It's such a male dominated uh, sport and really just in the NBA, that league uh, especially is so male dominated and she does it so great. Um, and then Stone, like you just said, I mean, he are, I've, in my mind, he already is successful. He, I mean, yes, he's going right. to be more successful. Like we can't talk about him enough, really. We could talk for another hour and we couldn't talk about Stone enough, but yeah, no, he, he is definitely going places outside of Rhode Island if he really wants to he's very talented um but also like you said just having your own style I mean yes you want to take bits and pieces of things from every person that you broadcast with I mean I know I certainly have every single person that has sat next to me I've taken at least one thing away and it's it's funny you say like like now you turn on a game and like you pay attention to the broadcasters because I was the same way like I used to just watch the game and not care about what they were saying like yeah I heard it but it wasn't really, it didn't really cross my mind. It wasn't really important. Now I kind of like turn on any game. It doesn't matter who's broadcasting. And I kind of like, just, I'm like, wow, like, oh, that's interesting the way that they said that. Like, you know, I, I maybe would have said that differently or, oh, I really yeah. like that. I'm going to steal that. You know, I've, I've taken, I've listened to podcasts and like the way that people have worded things I've used on broadcasts. Like it's so important to kind of take like bits and pieces of things and kind of mold it into your own style is what I guess I'm trying to say. Right. And that's also like what you talked about, about like kind of like always, I don't know exactly what you said in the beginning, but just always working and always like getting busy. Like it's never off time for like people. Like, like if we watch a sports game to me, I'm like studying and I'm listening yeah. to people are saying things. I'm, even the reporters, like it was um the Boston Celtics. It was the fir first playoff game, which was insane. Um, and there was like a post game interview with the coach and I was just listening to how the reporter like was interviewing the coach, how she was like looking at him, facing him, like every little thing. And I was like, maybe I would have worded that question differently or how would I have worded that question differently? Even my mom was like, Paige, how do you ask this question? So it's just like constantly taking information in and constantly thinking about how to do things like better, not, or not even better, but just more your style or how to make something new. It's just like constant like thought processes yeah absolutely i have uh a couple more questions quickly i want to ask um about the a10 men's tournament and then a few rapid fire questions and two more questions but uh quick so i want to ask about the a10 men's tournament uh down in dc you were able to travel for that that experience like that looked awesome i saw some of the pictures that you um took or that were on your instagram and everything like that i guess what was that experience like just being on the court you know with the confetti like dropping into your hands and like Grant Golden and Jacob Gilliard are literally just feet away from you. And those guys are like the real deal. I mean, they've been playing college basketball for, <laughs> it feels like forever, but yeah. just like, what was that experience? Like, you know, just being on the court and yes, it wasn't Rhode Island that was, you know, hoisting up the trophy, but it was still really cool to just have been there and on the court for that. Yeah, it was honestly 
I think I, I can say confidently it was the best experience I've had sports media wise so far. And it was so unexpected. I found out literally a week and a half before I was going that I was going because I'm an eight-time ambassador and my boss for that, he reached out, like he, he just called me randomly and was like, hey, do you want to go? Like, we'll pay for your, your stuff. Like, you to, like just come down. I was like, yeah. So like, you can't say no. And I, I had like appointments too. I canceled everything. I was like, I'm going. Um, so then I, I flew down and it was just the coolest experience. And it really opened my eyes to the fact, like I love Rhode Island, I do. Um, but it opened my eyes to the fact that there's there's more than Rhode Island. And it's it's such a big, like it's just such a big field. And like, I, I was so into each game, even though it wasn't Rhode Island. And so my job when I was there was um, social media. So I was posting on their Instagram page and I just posted like, um reels i had to make a reel after every day um and then i would do like game stories and like fans so i would just like i was running like whole instagram um and it was just such a cool experience i went to all the post game like conferences and and even like interacting with the fans was so, like just so cool because they come in and out because a tournament style like there's new fans like every three hours yeah. um and just to see like the passion and like it was so cool and for Richmond to win such an underdog story it was so unbelievable and just to, I could I once Rhode Island left um I'm not supposed to be affiliated with anyone but I was kind of rooting for Richmond like deep down because they were such an underdog and they like just kept going and I like kind of like I or like I felt a connection with the players like even though I had no idea who they were yeah like, each player on the court like I was like rooting for everyone and it was just so cool like to see the emotion at the end like to be on the court at that I was so I was squatted down, like, because I was on the court doing the Instagram. So when they, like, they were about to win, like, we all knew they were, like, it came down to the wire, but it was pretty sure Richmond was going to win. We were all, like, in a sprinting, I'm not kidding, a sprinting position, like, we were about to run a track race, because like, we all wanted to get, like, the first clip. So I had my phone, because that's what I recorded in, and I was just getting in everyone's faces, like, just to catch, like, the emotion, and, like, it was so, like, the there was tears, there was, like, I got a clip and it was of the coach, his wife, and his two kids. His two kids were crying. Like yeah. his wife was just like, I gave him a kiss. I was like, I'm so proud of you. I got that on film. And it was like oh, cool. such, such a cool clip just to be like in the middle of like probably the best days of the, these people's lives was yeah. just so incredible. And it kind of got me excited to be like a part of this for the rest of my life. And hopefully I'll, maybe one year I'll be at the, championship nationally i'll be at in Mar march madness or i'll be at a super bowl and like just this is like a small in in the grand scheme of things a smaller event and it just got me excited to like really grow and like get to those big big events yeah i mean it's small but it, like but it is big as well <laughs> it, you know it's it's small compared to the other championships and everything like that but it's it's huge honestly to say that like you captured those moments i saw that clip of the coach um and also like just talking about feeling like a connection to Richmond like yeah we don't know anything about their program you know we don't really know about who these players are like outside of you know just being athletes but it's like you want to root for them also because like they beat Rhode Island so you kind of want to be like wow this is the best team they beat us like they yeah. beat anyone and they made it to the tournament you know the big dance so that was that was really cool like that you were able to capture those moments and be on the court for that um, yeah, and I also like follow up now like I follow like uh because I I love bond people on Instagram because I like to see where people go after I meet them like I just think it's a really cool concept so I followed like a ton of the Richmond team and like just seeing where they are now like now they're looking to go into like the NBA draft and they're working to do that I like Grant Golden I follow him on Instagram and he's now working with kids and like bring it back to his community and just like like I said like viewing the stories of these people afterwards like follow people after see what they do after it's just so cool yeah that's awesome so i have a few uh rapid fire questions for you uh, a couple of them are a little funny but uh nothing nothing too crazy no trivia none of that just like more like this or that like go to this um so i guess we'll, we'll jump right in so you're from rhode island um from what i understand donuts and dell's lemonade like the two biggest things and maybe i'm missing something but i guess like would you rather have an alley an alley's donut like a donut or like an ice cold dell's lemonade this is controversial i don't like alley's donuts at all so i'm gonna go with dell's lemonade and another thing is clam cakes clam, clam cakes, cakes take, take the cake for everything clam cakes overall three but if it's between those two dell's okay all right 
this one I'm uh, a little nervous to ask, but I'm nervous. You, might, you might get mad at me, but um, you have to give up one thing, right? Camp okay. Cronin, because I know how much you like Camp Cronin, because I see you there, or TikTok, because I know one, oh. you presented on that, and two, you're always on my For You page, so you have to give up one thing. Am I really? Yeah, oh sometimes. Like, not all the time, but sometimes. <laughs> oh, Okay, I'm gonna give up Camp Cronin because I can watch Sunsets other places, but you know how much I love that place. Yeah, I always see that you're there, so I, I had to ask. Um, also, you're from Rhode Island, so you have to like the beach, right? Your love go-to beach. beach. My go-to beach? Yeah, go-to. Narragansett. Okay. State Beach. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I only really know Gansett and Scarborough. I'm sure there's others, but I only really know those two being here. Watch Hill is also really nice, but it's more like if I'm just gonna like sit down and tan because it's more like bougie there. Narragansett, I'll bring my bo- my boogie board and we'll have fun in Narragansett Beach. I got you. So, what is your the next question? So, what is your favorite like genre of music or your favorite artist? Like, what are you usually listening to in the car or on the beach? Or country. Anything? What was country, it? Country. Country. Straight country. That's all I listen to. I'm the opposite. I hate country. I know. I I, I could tell by when I said that. <laughs> I'm. Yeah, not not a big country fan. I feel like that's very popular up here, though, which is, like, yeah. I feel like I've met a lot of people that like, like, country music. I don't know. You either love it or hate it. There's no in between. Yeah, there isn't. Like, I know a lot of people who, like, die for it, and then I know people that, like, can't stand it. I feel like I, I don't know. I feel like there's some things that, like, I can maybe tolerate, but others that I just, like, oh, man. like I'll put you on to some, because I don't like, like, the really country, like, little banjo like i don't like that yeah. but like there's some like pop country like there's morgan wallen rascal flats okay Zane, kane brown they're good okay they're so yeah good. no some of those artists are pretty good um luke combs too it's not bad right love luke combs yeah i've heard i've heard he uh some pretty good things about him as well so yeah um all right it's another funny one but uh so i i know from snapchat from your snapchat stories and also like i just heard you're a big gummy bear enthusiast Oh my gosh. So, like, favorite brand? Because I see, like, I forgot. I thought I saw, like, you doing, like, reviews. What is your, like, what is the best brand of gummy bears? I have to know. Haribo, 100%. And I always. Or just the generic, like, just the generic Haribo? Yes. I, 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 so I do gummy bear reviews. And I, yeah, I've seen I <laughs> yeah, I did one at one of the basketball games actually with um the graphic designer um Jaden Rossi, and we did one together. But I whenever I try a new gummy bear, I put it on my Snapchat story because I I'm very passionate about my gummy bears. I maybe mean, saw like one or two, but yeah, I I know like from from watching like those two that you're very passionate about it. So I know like it has to be not too, not too chewy, but not too soft. It, it, there's a mix. Haribo is perfect. It, it's yeah. not. It's right in the middle. This isn't a gummy bear, but I like them a lot. Uh, Welch's fruit snacks. I mean, oh, so good. Yeah, I'm like. Maybe I can add those fruit snacks to my reviews. Yeah, you should honestly. They have like Arizona kind too now. I haven't had had those the other day. Were they good? Like, are they good? Or they weren't great. I'm not gonna lie. I had really high expectations because Arizona's so good. Yeah. Mm, They're like a five. Interesting. Interesting. I have three more rapid fire questions, and then two more questions. Um. So who is like one athlete or person at URI that you, you know, are just very grateful to have met? I'm going to say two, MP, Papasi, and um, Emmanuel Tahan. Okay. Love them. Is there a reason why or just? Um, I just think they're such girl bosses. I think it's so cool like how successful they've become. And they're also the most humble. Like they're so good. Like just skill wise, they're yeah. probably two of the top in the league. And they're just so humble and so kind. Like they'll, like they'll never not say hello to me. Like they'll always, they always thank me for what I do with the broadcasting. They're just such nice people and such great athletes. So I just, I'm so grateful. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I remember like meeting them at um, Women's Basketball Media Day before they went down to Delaware. But yeah, they're both great people, and that's that's a good answer. Cool. Um, what is like one sporting event? You kind of touched on it, like hopefully being at a final four or Super Bowl one day, but like one sporting event that you hope to one day either broadcast or just be working for or working at. Definitely a uh, New England Patriots Super Bowl. If that ever happens again. I hope not. I mean, <laughs> being from New York, I hope not. But, um, yeah. I mean, listen, like, you know, we, we have two on you, you know, but it's, uh, 
it's a whole nother <laughs> whole nother interview a whole nother episode so we're not gonna get we're not gonna go <laughs> into that right now um last rapid fire question um do you prefer the kingston narragansett area or east providence Ooh. um all right i love my house i love my family but other than that definitely the kingston narragansett area just it's it's way prettier there's more to do it's it's really cool yeah i was gonna say there's a lot there's a lot to do i don't i haven't really been to other places other than newport um in rhode island but there's a lot um I mean, Providence is cool. I'm from East Providence. It's a town, like, everyone thinks East Providence is in Providence. It's a, it's a town east of Providence, so it's not in Providence. But Providence yeah, I thought it was in Providence. Of, what is it? I thought it was in Providence. I no, thought no, no. It <laughs> it's, it's not. Um, but there's a ton of stuff to do in Providence. But East Providence, there's, there's not much to do. I'm going to add a question. What's, like, the go-to thing to do in East Providence? Like, if I'm, if I'm in town, like, what, what are we doing? Like, what, what are you doing? Oh, gosh. Probably, like... When it gets really nice out, um, going to Crescent Park, there's like a carousel, there's um, like crab cakes and clam chowder. And it's just like, there's sometimes like bands and like that play. So it's like a really cool like summer place. In the winter though, I honestly, I don't think I can give you, there's like duck pin bowling that you could probably do, but in the winter, there's not much. In the summer though, really pretty. I got you. All right, two more questions for you. Um, so what is next for, for Paige Messier? You said you have an internship this summer, but you know, leave the people with uh, what, what you got coming up. All right. So I'm not going to say too much about it because I'm not sure if it's finalized yet. Okay. But um, I have an internship this summer and then next um, fall and winter, I have an exciting internship coming up with the school, which I'll talk about more like once it actually happens. But we're going to wait until because I don't want to jinx anything. So yeah. um, awesome. it's really cool. It has to do with um, football and basketball. Very exciting stuff. That's um, awesome. Yeah, but that's all I that's all I want to say about that. But the internship, um, definitely if anyone's watching, I'll post it all on my social media. Um, it's gonna be so much fun. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll definitely look out for that. Um and then the last question I have for you, uh it's just any advice, you know, you'd give to, you know, people like myself or you, you know, who are looking to, I guess, pursue sports media, take on a similar vet, uh path. Like, what is the best advice you can give someone? Yeah. Um my mom sent me a text message the other day and it, this is probably the best thing that I have for now. Um, it's just to be resilient and be able to take notes, be able to take criticism and kind of use that to light a fire in you because like I said, you're going to hear a lot of that. So just be resilient, work hard because like I said, the person who works the hardest will get the, the most in this, in this thing. So just be confident and be resilient. Yeah, that's great advice. Paige, thanks so much for doing this. Um, if I don't see you like on campus or anything for the school year ends, have a great summer. I'll definitely see you in the fall um, and hope to be in touch in the meantime. And of course, go Rody. Go Rody, thank you so much. Thank you. Press I won't for sure, you gon' need three promoters. I got the body from Jim Ellis, but I had switched the motor. These badass bitches riding around this bitch and they all the coders. Yeah. I just told them make a story. Yeah. I just bought all the Trojans. Yeah. Yeah.